Sean Mize here, and what I'm going to do now is give you an overview of the coaching business. What I've discovered through just kind of almost not necessarily doing an audit, but looking at what I've got in my packages, I, I noticed that in so many of my packages, I teach the details, the details for this and the details for this and the details for this. I teach all the details, but I think that maybe sometimes I don't do the greatest job of plugging all those pieces in together and saying, hey, here's how all the pieces fit. And so today's teaching is designed to fill that gap and to say, here's the big overview. And, and the reason I say that ahead of time is that this is only an overview. I'm, I'm in this overview, I'm not going to teach you how to do all the parts I'm going to tell you that go into the coaching business. All of those parts are in my training materials, okay? It, it, so it's, 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 this, um, it's this balance. You know, if, if you're teaching details, it's very difficult to do overview, and if you're doing an overview, if I were to put all the details in it, this would take 15 hours instead of, you know, whatever it might be, 30 minutes, okay? And so this is the overview and then if you want the 30 hours version, then you go into my materials and you study because I've got trainings on all of these pieces. Okay, so having said that, let's get into the overview. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, I'm actually going to go through this overview in such a way that you can see how it fits from a few different perspectives. The first perspective I'm going to give you is the chronological perspective in terms of what happens with your coaching client. Okay, then I'm going to give you the perspective of the, the, the order in which you need to make it happen in your business. And then I'm going to give you a couple of caveats. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go through and go to the details. So chronologically, the first thing you need is traffic. Then you need when people have, they, they are traffic, they are cold prospects, they have a need that they've read one of your articles or they've read your blog post and they've said, I need what you have, and then they go to your squeeze page. And when they get to your squeeze page, your squeeze page says opt in, you'll get more information. They opt in. That's the next step. Then just because they're opted in, they're barely a prospect here. You need to do some prospect nurturing. Now, I've created what I call a credibility campaign, which for the first 10 days that somebody's in your campaign, every single day they're going to get an email that builds on your credibility. And what I have found is that when people have the opportunity to get 10 times they get to be exposed to your credibility, then they are much more ready to buy when you present them with coaching. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to get them in a place where they might buy your coaching. That's probably going to be either a teleseminar or a webinar, or it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one coaching involvement. And, and really, I believe, until you're generating minimum 10 grand and probably 20 grand a month, you probably should be doing the bulk of your, your, your client generation through one-on-one -on -one calls. They convert much higher than teleseminars. Teleseminars are wonderful when you have hundreds of people that are prospects, but when you're first starting out, you don't. So if you have a big business, teleseminars and webinars, you know, could be the way to go. Uh, but if you're a smaller business, you, I believe that your highest conversion, I know that your highest conversion opportunity is a one-on-one -on -one phone call. And then the next thing that you're going to do is deliver your coaching. Hang out. In reality, it's pretty hard to be motivated to drive traffic when you don't have a coaching program. So in reality, the order that we, we normally would put this thing together would be to design the program first have an outline of a curriculum. Now, notice I'm not saying create the entire coaching program. I'm just saying design it and outline it. Then once you know those things, then you can write your 10 emails for credibility. And then once you have all those emails in place, you can start driving traffic to this system. Okay, now, you notice I've gone through it two different ways. I said, hey, we can start with traffic, and then the traffic becomes – goes to squeeze page and then they be, those people that are in the squeeze page be added to your email list and your email list gets 10 emails and then after they get 10 emails they have an opportunity to buy coaching and then they enroll in your coaching. I mean that would be it in an ideal world. Now there's one more thing and that is that if somebody doesn't sign up for coaching after the first 10 day period what are you going to do? You're going to put them back into your system and they're going to continue to get more emails over time. Probably not daily like you might do the first 10 days but you're going to continue to build relationship with these people so that you can make future opportunities for them to join your 
your coaching. Now, if you contrast what I just said to the first thing you could do would be to design your program and create a curriculum, then you're going to create your email campaign, then you're going to create your squeeze page, and then drive traffic to it, okay? That actually, that order actually makes more sense from the perspective of, well, my, my guess is most people I've talked with, they like that better because they have something tangible to send people to. Okay, now, one of the things that I have taught against for so long that you, you might see me not teaching against it as much anymore, but I've, I've taught for so long against focusing on getting your coaching program first and getting your emails in place first because of the fact that if you do that, some people take some six months to a year to do that before they ever start driving traffic. And so what I've been teaching for a long time is instead what I want you to do is drive traffic first and then you build the demand and then once the demand's there, find out what they need and give it to them. Okay? Unfortunately, in real life, many people cannot sink their teeth into making that happen. So they start getting this traffic in, but they never do anything with the traffic. Okay? And obviously, the other way, which is create your coaching program first, takes 6 to 12 months to do that, and then you drive traffic. Well, that doesn't really work anyway, work either. So what I've done recently, and the model I'm going to teach you now, and I've had some incredible success with new coaching clients that have come on within the last few months that have been using this model, is instead of creating your whole coaching program up front, okay, what you do is you take one afternoon, like three to four hours, and just design and outline your coaching program, write your 10 emails, and create your squeeze page. You do all of it in one day, maybe two days. You do all of it in two days, and then the third day, you're able to start driving traffic into the system. Okay, so you, it, hopefully you can see how th this model of doing it very, very quickly, getting the back-end pieces in place very, very quickly, and then driving traffic, is actually superior to doing it either of the other ways. And the reason is that either of the other ways, there's, there's all these opportunities for people to get bogged down in doing the details. And the key is if you don't have traffic, you can't sell anything. If you don't have anything to sell your traffic, you still can't sell anything. So what we want to do is we want to design your program very, very, very quickly. So what I'm going to share with you now is I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you now how to design your program very, very quickly. This is going to be, again, it's an outline. This is an overview. I've taught the details in my training programs. Then I'm going to show you that once you have that program in place, you'll put the emails in place, you'll put the squeeze page in place, then you'll start driving traffic, and then you'll get people on the teleseminar, the one-on-one -on -one phone call. Okay, so please understand, this doesn't make intuitive sense to do it in this order, um, un unless you've heard what I just shared with you, which is why the other two don't necessarily work. And I'll tell you, folks, I used to teach, I used to spend quite a bit of time trying to teach this idea that it's, that you, neither one comes first. You just have to do them simultaneously. But it's very difficult for people to intuitively sink their teeth into doing two things that won't work without each other. And so normally you have to give people a first. And so that's what I'm giving you. Okay, so here's the steps involved in designing the program. Okay, and I realize this is an overview. This is a, a group overview. But I want to share with you the questions that I use when I do work with somebody one-on-one. -on -one, and I give them the questions I'm getting ready to give you. They answer them. And then as a result of answering them, we are able to craft their coaching program. But I believe you can do it just by taking these questions that I give you now. The first thing is, the first question is, what can you teach? What can you teach people to do? Okay, what, what can you teach people? Because, excuse me, if you think about it, that's what coaching is. It, it is. It's a deeper level of teaching, but it's basically teaching people how to do something and giving them access to you so that there's accountability and you help people by metering out the information they get. So instead of them being able to get all of the information up front and then do it whenever they want, it's more like a college course. You get a little bit every week, and you have to turn in a homework assignment to prove you did the work before you get the next lesson. And then at the end of 13 weeks, you actually have results because you've done all of the steps. So the question is, what can you teach? So you have to decide what, what can you teach, what has, other, what has value to some people out there that might pay for that particular teaching. 
Okay, the next question is that once you have that teaching in place, you have to ask yourself, what part of the market will make you more money? Okay, so for example, let's say that you are in the market, so let's say that your market is, um, let's do three exercises, and I'm going to look at it from three different perspectives. Okay, the first perspective I'm going to give you is from a, um, a business perspective. Okay, so the question is, who's probably willing to pay you more? The person who doesn't have a business yet and wants to learn how to get one, or somebody that already has a business and but they're making mistakes that are preventing them from taking it to the next level. Okay, now depending on the market, you have to decide that. Okay, because in some markets there could be so many greedy people that that people will just pay to learn how to do something. Okay, and that's where the real money is. Okay, you have to decide that in your market. But in a lot of markets, it's actually the people that have a fully functional business that has money coming in. And they're willing to invest a portion of that to make even more money in the future. And you have to decide what part of the market will pay more. So let's look at health coaching. Let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's say health coaching. Okay, what part of the market's willing to pay more? People who are, um, you know, lower middle class and don't have much disposable income and want to learn to get healthy. Okay, or CEOs, doctors, and lawyers, and astronauts that make in excess of a quarter million dollars a year and who don't really have time to be healthy, and they don't really have time to spend a lot of time learning, and they want somebody to give them a 10-minute motivational call every single morning that will put their life on track for the day, would that not be a more lucrative market if we compare customer to customer? Would that not be a more lucrative market than just marketing some health product to anybody that will buy it? Okay, so let's say we have a health product, we have a health coaching program. You know, you might have a really hard time selling a health coaching program to the general public for a hundred bucks a month. Okay, but if you were to craft a perfect program for CEOs who have more money than time and that are they have conditions in their life that if they don't fix their health they're going to die of a heart attack or a stroke or or, or um high blood pressure okay they're not going to be able to spend as much time with their wife or husband or their children some of those executives might be willing to pay a thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars a month to change their life so the question is how many clients, how many run-of-the-mill, low-income people would you need to beg, borrow, and steal to get them to pay 100 bucks a month to equal one client who's willing to pay you, let's say, $3,000 a month to spend 10 minutes on the phone with them each morning? Okay, Which one's going to make you more money in the long run? Now, some of you might be saying, well... You know, there's more people out there that will only invest 100 bucks. So let me go after the huge market. I'll get like a million people paying me and and all of that good stuff, and and then I'll be making lots of lots of money. Okay. But the truth of the matter is that for most of you, I mean, unless you're gonna do the infomercial route. I mean, really, you're probably not going to get 20 million people in America signed up or in any country signed up to your coaching program. Realistically, you're one person. You might have a couple of helpers. Maybe you have an assistant or two. But for the most part, you're going to do better by selling to fewer people at a higher price. And so the question is, what parts of your market could you sell to at a higher price? So we just said weight loss coaching, right? Or health coaching. I said health coaching. And I said, look, maybe you go after CEOs. Maybe you go after doctors. They don't care how much they spend. They just want results. Okay? Whereas if you go with the low end people, they're like, oh, I'll just pay 30 bucks a month and go to the gym and I'll wing it on my own and I'll try to copy what everybody else is doing. Whereas the CEO or the doctor or the lawyer or the astronaut who knows what their time is worth is like, you know what? I don't have time to go to the gym. I need somebody to bring the gym to me. Okay? So let's talk about in, instead of, instead of saying, you know, like health coaching, let's say that there's some kind of psychological coaching. 
okay, or emotional coaching. So may, may, whether it's um, relationship coaching or marriage coaching or any kind of coaching, okay? So if you want to sell a package, let's say you have emotional coaching, you know, once again, do, do you want to go after a market that, you know, I mean, most people – at the low end of the income spectrum, would not even think about spending any money on emotional coaching. However, I mean, look at the movie stars right now. Look at, think about the movie stars right now that are going into rehabs and are going into all kinds of programs that are five grand a month or ten grand a month or twenty grand a month for, to be able to get their life in order. Okay. Obviously, I mean, they're in a position where some of the things that got their life out of order as a result or kind of a result of having all that money, okay? But who do you have a better chance of selling a $5,000 emotional coaching package to? A movie star and, or an astronaut or a CEO that's going to drink himself out of a job, okay? Or some middle-class person that you know, doesn't even make $5,000 a month altogether anyway, okay? So think about that. Who's going to pay you more? Who's going to be willing to pay your price? Well, maybe in this case, the person that's going to pay your price is the person that's making more money. You know, And so maybe what you need to be doing is targeting those people who have more money, whether that's CEOs or doctors or real estate agents or astronauts. I mean, there's plenty of people in this country and other countries who are making good money and are willing to pay. Now, the problem is those people come onto your list and they see your little $7 ebook where they see a $97 solution and they look at it and they, they think, you know what? There's no way that that solution can help me. Do you know why they think that? Because they're used to paying $500 an hour for their attorney. They are used to paying the surgeon in their hospital $5,000 an hour to operate on their patient. They are used to buying, you know, if they're an astronaut, they're used to driving a machine that costs $2 billion. If they are a movie star, they are used to having somebody come to their house with a house with a van full of equipment for them to go work out on real quick instead of having to go to the gym. They're used to paying $7,000 for that service. They see your little package online for $97. They look at it, and they immediately say, this person doesn't have what I want. Why? Because you're priced too low. And, you know, it's kind of like – if you're going to buy a new pair of jeans, okay, and let's say there's two stores you could go to to buy a new pair of jeans. Let's say there's three stores, okay, and I'm giving you this example on the fly, so I hope it works. There's three stores. One is a retail store, a big box retail store. I won't name any names, but you know who they are, and you can buy a $10 pair of jeans, and the tag is ripped off of them so they can give them to you for 10 bucks. okay? Or you can go to a high-end store and buy them. I saw some jeans recently for $198, okay, at a store downtown. You can buy them there, $198. And, and by the way, these were the nicest jeans I think I've ever felt in my life. They were real soft, and I think they'd be really, really comfortable jeans. Okay, and then you could go somewhere in between. You could go to the mall, and you could buy a $79 pair of jeans or a $98 pair of jeans or a $49 pair of jeans, okay? Okay, now. Obviously, if you're a penny pinching, almost penny pinching, or you you really very much at the lower end of things economically, or whatever the case is, okay, then maybe you buy all of your jeans for ten dollars, okay, and and that's okay. My guess is that the, if if somebody is buying their jeans for ten dollars and they're buying T-shirts for five dollars, then those people are the types of people who are probably not candidates for even your $100 coaching program. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let's imagine that we have the person that's at the high end, and the only thing they'll buy is the $198 jeans. And by the way, if you have a hard time believing people would pay $98 or $198 for jeans, and by the way, my guess is that at least one person on this call is wearing a pair of $98 jeans, okay? So you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those of you who don't, for those of you who maybe, you know, a $49 pair of jeans is fine, I encourage you, if you live in the big city, go to wherever your city is, the part of your city that has the row of, of, of uh, retail row where you could buy 
more expensive clothing. Okay? And spend a Saturday there. And just go shopping. You don't have to buy anything. Go through all the stores and watch what other people are buying. And and you've got to believe that people are willing to pay those kinds of prices. You've got to. Okay, and here's the thing. If people are willing to pay $98 or $198 for a pair of jeans, those people might be willing to pay more than $97 a month for your coaching. Okay, now, I'm going to give you another example. We'll go into this same example. I want you to imagine that somebody goes in the store. And they normally buy $49 a pair of jeans. They're, they're, they're not ready to buy them at $98 or $198. They, they're just not, they're not there yet, okay? But they normally buy $49 a pair of jeans, and they wouldn't be caught dead in a $10 a pair of jeans. If they were to go into a new store and they saw $10 jeans on the rack, what would they do? They would walk out. Does that make sense? They would walk out because they would say, this place doesn't have anything for me. This is where the poor people shop. And that's what's happening on your list. If people are coming onto your list and they're seeing lots of opportunities, if you're see, selling PLR stuff that they could buy anywhere else for 37 bucks, as soon as they get the first email, they're saying, you know what, this person isn't the right person for me. Does, does that make sense? If your prices are too low, you are chasing away your better clients. Before they ever have a chance to be on your list, they're unsubscribing on their third email. And then a year later, you're getting emails from people that say, I can't afford what you have. I can't afford what you have. You're never getting, getting emails from people that say, I wish that your products were more higher priced. No, because all the people that wish that your prices were higher priced they have already unsubscribed from your list. You see, when people come onto your list, they are some representation of a normal economic bell curve, okay? Meaning that some people that come onto your list are dead broke. Some people are scraping by. Some people are middle class. Some people are upper middle class. And some people are just rich. And then some people are filthy rich. Okay, now, if you get 100 people that come onto your list and 20 of them are dead broke, if you're trying to sell $7 ebooks so those dead broke people will scrape together 7 bucks and losing the other 80%, you're, you're, I hope you understand that that doesn't work. Then another 20% can barely afford to do anything. Okay? And so now you say, oh, I'm going to sell a $37 book to try to hopefully they'll buy it. Well, even if they buy it, they're never buying anything else. So who cares? Okay, then the next step, step is the middle class. The middle class are wonderful because the middle class, they recognize they want value. They will put things on a credit card and just make payments, okay? And so you could market to those people if you want to. But some part of your list, 15%, 20%, whatever, are rich or filthy rich or at least upper middle class. They could pay $5,000 for your program, okay? And the filthy rich could pay five grand a month, okay? Shoot, I've paid five grand a month for coaching before, and I'm not filthy rich, okay? But the person I was learning from had something to offer me that I could buy nowhere else on earth at any price, so I paid his price, okay? Here's the thing. The people that are in that upper category on this income scale that come to your list, if you market to them and just one of them buys, you'll make more money than if you market to everybody else. And the person that's in the upper income or above category drops off completely. And I'm not saying that you should only market to rich people. Please understand that. What I am saying is you have to decide who you're marketing to because you're only going to get the kinds of people that you market to. If you market to really poor people and sell things for a dollar, then almost everybody that buys from you is going to be poor, which is fine if that's what you want to do. If you want to sell $1 coaching, to poor people because you have a soft spot for them, well, you know, that's your prerogative, okay? Now, if you have a soft spot for poor people, you're probably better off to sell something to the rich people and then take a percentage of the money you make and just give it to the poor, okay? But if you're so inclined that all you want to do is sell $1 products to poor people, that's fine. Just know that that's what you're doing, okay? If you want to sell to middle-class people, ask yourself, what language do I need to use to be able to sell to middle-class people? If you want to be able to sell to people who are in a, in, in a higher uh, price bracket, you have to ask yourself, 
if I keep trying to sell to people that can barely afford me and I keep trying to use language like lots of exclamation marks and lots of highlighting and making my sales letter scream, okay, do you think people buy $5,000 coaching from a screaming sales letter? No. Middle class people buy from screaming sales letters and, and will, they'll probably usually tell you, I hate it that the sales letter screams, but hey, they had what I needed. Okay, so you really got to think about what you're doing. Okay, so let's move on here. You, I really want you to understand this piece. What part of the market will pay, will, will work for you? You have to decide that. What part of the market will work for you? And you've got to decide that, whatever it is. And once you've determined that, then what you're going to do is you are going to outline your coaching program. Okay. And here's the method that I use to outline a coaching program. I'm going to give it to you as a 13-week introductory program, but you could do this for a 52-week program if you wanted. Most people like to start, uh, my experience is most people like to start with a shorter coaching program because, I mean, it's, well, it's a whole lot easier. And you, after somebody's been with you for 13 weeks, they can always choose to stay on. Okay, so 13 weeks is a good, is a good, good measure here. Okay, so... Let's take somebody, let, let's assume that you're going to teach somebody something, okay, and you've agreed that you're going to sell to this certain part of the market, and what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, what could I teach somebody in 13 weeks? And I want you to imagine in your mind that you're working with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, okay, and we're not going to build a one-on-one -on -one program, although you could if you wanted to, but I want you to imagine that you're working with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. If you were to work with somebody one hour a week for 13 weeks in your niche, what could you teach them? And just write it down. Write down all the things you could teach somebody in 13 weeks. Okay. Then I want you to write down what kind of results would somebody get if they worked with me for 13 weeks. If they came and worked with me for an hour a week, and at the end of the hour I gave them a homework assignment, that when they completed the homework assignment, it would show that they had mastery of this topic, and they had to turn in the homework assignment before the next week. What kind of results could somebody get? What kind of results could somebody get? Okay. Once you've determined that, now that you know what the results are, you can ask the following question. What will people pay for those results? What will people pay for those results? Okay, now, remember, you've got to determine who you're marketing to. Because poor people are going to pay, be willing to pay a different price than rich people. Lower middle class people are going to be willing to pay a different price than upper middle class people. And middle class people are going to be able to pay a different price than the filthy rich. So you have to ask yourself, who do I want to market to? You know, maybe you say, well, you know, I don't want to market to poor people, and I don't want to market to lower income people, but I'm, I'd like to market to middle class people. I think there's a lot more middle class people, and they have access to credit cards, and they're comfortable just making payments. I'd like to market to middle class people instead of rich people. I just wouldn't feel comfortable. That's fine. That's fine. So that, and what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, these results, what will people pay for those results? Okay, and then once you've taken that number, what will people pay for those results? Notice I'm not talking about how much are you going to charge per hour. Okay, so let me give a couple examples. Okay. Let's say that we're going to use three examples just like I did before. I said I, said I was going to do three. I might have only done two. So hopefully I did three. But I, so we'll do three examples. Here we'll do three examples of business coaching. We'll do health coaching and life coaching, okay? So maybe your business coaching is coaching that will show somebody how to double their revenue in a year. And so they're, they're doing 100 grand now, and if you, they go through your 13-week program, they can double that. They're going to generate 100 grand. What, is somebody, what, what, what would it be worth to somebody to, to learn how to generate an extra 100 grand a year? What would it be worth? For some people, it would be worth $100,000 because they know they could use it again and again every year and it would be an investment. But let's just be conservative and say it would be worth $10,000. So now you've got a $10,000 program. That's what it's worth. And maybe you say, you know what, I want to make it more affordable than it's worth. Well, it will be a $4,000 program. That's fine. Notice we're not talking about your hourly rate. Okay, now, let's go to health coaching. Right now, you know, Health coaching is a tough one for people to sometimes get their mind around because they think, well, why would anybody pay more than 100 bucks a month to learn how to be healthy? They could just go get a book at the bookstore. Well, you know, unfortunately, and we'll use America as an example, there's a lot of unhealthy people in America. In fact, by some statistics, 
probably 50 to 70 percent of the people that live in America um, are unhealthy. Well, there's books in almost every city about how to get healthy. The books aren't working. I mean, really, really. The books at the bookstores are not working to make America healthy. I, I'm sorry to tell you, the books aren't working. Okay? So let's say that somebody goes to their doctor and they find out that they are in the 75th percent risk, risk percentile for having a heart attack that could potentially be fatal. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't have a heart attack at all. But, you know, let's say that somebody does have a heart attack because they have not gotten healthy. What's it going to cost them? What's a heart attack cost these days? You know, what's it cost to have bypass surgery? So, I don't know, 50, 70, 100 grand, maybe more. What's it cost if you have a stroke and you have to fix that? What's worse, what if you have a stroke that makes you paralyzed on half of you? Can you even put a price on that? If you've got somebody that comes to you and they need some health, okay, what would it be worth it to somebody to get in total health so that they took their heart attack risk down to almost zero, they took their stroke and high blood pressure risk down to almost zero, and they got healthy. What would it be worth to somebody to spend more time with their great grandchildren? What would it be worth to somebody if they can't go outside and play football with their kids because they're out of breath, because they're overweight and unhealthy? What if you could change that for somebody? What could it be worth to them? You know, for the person that's going to have an imminent heart attack, it could be worth $20,000. And maybe if you're in the health niche, maybe your co coaching program should be heart attack avoidance coaching program. It's $20,000, and I only offer it to people who have, you know, who are doctors and lawyers and astronauts and movie stars. Why? Well, because maybe those people have the money to be able to afford it. And I only offer, you have to take an audit to be able to be in my class, and you have to take a survey, and you you have to be in, like, a certain area of bad health to even be able to get into my program. Okay, now... Maybe you're thinking, well, I couldn't sell a $20,000 heart attack program to the lower income people. Well, you're absolutely right. You have to make a decision. Do you want to sell $97 a month coaching to poor people, okay? Or do you want to sell top of the line coaching? Or maybe you say, you know what? I want this to be affordable to almost everybody. You know, I'm going to make this $1,000 a month, okay? And then you, you market it as you know, whatever it is. I mean, that's that's just one way you could do it. He said, let's go to life coaching. What's one area of life coaching? Well, one area of life coaching that's really popular is uh, relationships. You know, if somebody's been married for 20 years and things just aren't going too well anymore. Well, there's a couple of options here, aren't there? One's to grit your teeth the rest of your life. And the next one, of course, is, is the option I certainly don't recommend, but no, it's divorce, okay? That's, that's the other, that's the second option. Okay, now, let me ask you this. Has anybody ever gone through an exciting divorce? Think about it. People that are having relationship problems, what would they pay to be able to get that life back in their life, to get that spark back in their life, to be able to get along in such a way that they don't have to end this relationship of 20 years? Now, once again, if you're targeting the low-income area on your list, then it won't. You're not going to be able to come up with some reasonable prices. But what if instead you were to target people who have money? Could you not have a $5,000 relationship rescue program? Some people might pay $20,000 to avoid having to divvy up their house and all their assets and divvy up the kids and not have their best friend around anymore, even if they can't get along with them for the last two years. What would it be worth to somebody to figure all these things out? And I'm just giving you three examples. You know what your niche is. You need to go into your niche and ask yourself, what would it be worth for somebody to change their life? Okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this to the next level. Okay? So we've talked about this as being a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, but let me ask you this. This is all about results, right? What if you were to teach the exact same information that you're going to teach one-on-one -on -one and instead of doing an hour a week, you did an hour and 15 minutes. You taught the exact same information for an hour. And then at the end of the hour, you open the call up to the 10 people that are part of that group coaching class, and you said, do you have any questions? Okay, so that you could customize what you taught to each individual person. Could you not coach 10 people 
at the same time. And when they came through the 13 hours, if you taught them the exact same material, you required them to do the exact same homework, and you even gave them unlimited email access to you, or maybe if your things were priced right, they you give them your cell phone number and they could call you if they had a question. If you priced it right, you could do that, right? Okay, so at the end of 13 weeks, would they get the same results as the person that had one-on-one -on -one coaching? Well, if you gave them enough of your personal time, if they needed it, the answer should be yes. So let me ask you this. If they're able to get the exact same results in your small group coaching program as in your one-on-one, -on -one, what should the price be? Exact same results, the price should be the same, right? Now, obviously, you could discount it to make it a better deal if you wanted to, but you don't need to could be the exact same price as your one-on-one, -on -one. and then what you could do is increase the price of your one-on-one -on -one to encourage people not to take one-on-one -on -one with you. You don't want to do one-on-one. -on -one. If you can have 10 clients paying the same price all at one time, why would you do one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, so now that gives you your, your group coaching program right there. And then what you're going to do is as you do each one of those 13 weeks, you're going to record every lesson for 13 weeks. And then in the future, when somebody comes to you and wants to learn the exact same thing, you don't even have to do live coaching with them. You can just give them the 13 hours, right? So now what if you were to send them one recording every week for 13 weeks? What would happen? Now, if you send them one recording every single week for 13 weeks, and they studied it, and they did the homework, and they're required to turn the homework in, would, if they did all the work, would they not have the exact same results? Excellent. So if they have the exact same results, you could once again charge the exact same price for the recorded coaching program. Okay, now, we all know that we need to add a little bit more value if it's recorded because you're going to have a harder time getting people to actually listen to it. And so then what you do is you offer a group Q&A session that people can ask any questions that they want and that they're accountable to come to every single week for the 13 weeks. And, and what you can do is, Every 13 weeks, you can teach on a new topic so that after, say, four periods of 13 weeks, after a full year, you would have four 13-week programs that are recorded and that anybody that came in new, when, once you found out what their needs are, you could just plug them into the appropriate course. Could you not then have people in all four of the courses coming to the same Q&A call? And if you had them all coming to the same Q&A call, you could have multiple coaching programs with only one coaching call required from you each week. Okay, so let's move on. Now we've designed your program. Okay, and I've only, I've taken 30 minutes or so to work through all this. If you were to sit down with a pencil and paper and turn off the television and turn off the telephone and turn off your computer, probably in a couple hours you could do what I've just done and you could do it for your business. Okay, now once you have that, now you've got to find prospects. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you're going to write 10 emails to put into your email campaign that are going to build up whatever level of credibility that you need to have based on the price point you've decided and based on the coaching program that you want people in. You see, what I find is that so many people, when they're writing their emails, they just write an email that's whatever they feel like writing today. Oh, this is what I feel like writing to my list today. I'll send this out. Well, what good does that do? Wouldn't you be better to look at your coaching program and say, what email could I send out today that might lead people to being involved in my coaching program a month from now? What email could I send out today that would build relationship? And, of course, I teach you how to do that in my credibility campaign program. It teaches you exactly how to write all of those emails. And, again, I said this was going to be an overview. I probably went a little bit more detail into the pricing than I had anticipated, but I, I, got, on, I got teaching, and I said I want this to be complete and I believe this teaching is complete in terms of what you've got to do to put your coaching program, put the umbrella over your program, and, and have it out there. So there's your overview. Okay, now you've got these emails. Now once you have the emails, what do you need? You need people to read them. How do you do that? You create a squeeze page. On the squeeze page, you're going to give something away. Okay, but what you're going to do on that squeeze page is you're not going to target the poorest people in the world by saying, look, I mean, basically, some of these squeeze pages out there that are screaming at you, get your free report here, here, here. It's like a clown in the circus. Get your free report, free report. Enter your name and email. Get your free report, free report, free report and free coaching, free report and free coaching. Okay, who does that attract? It attracts people who go to the circus. 
I mean, really, it attracts people that are just looking for freebies. It attracts a bunch of freebie seekers. Okay, now what if instead your squeeze page were to say that congratulations for coming to this page, and um, because of the fact that you're at this page, I have decided to put together some very special training for you, and this training actually is a portion of my $5,000 coaching program. It's an excerpt from my $5,000 coaching program, and I encourage you to download it and see how much value you can get out of this segment. Wow. Who's going to sign up for your list now? Well, everybody's going to know you have a $5,000 coaching program. Everybody's going to know that this is an excerpt, and when they read it, they're going to go, wow, this is really good information. Do you see the mindset shift that can happen here if you position your squeeze page as giving true value instead of just giving away a free report, free report? Enter your name and email for a free report. Do you see the difference, folks? Okay, now, I can hear you right now. You're saying, well, isn't the conversion rate on the second page going to be lower? Well, maybe it is, but who cares? I'd rather have 10 people come onto my list every week that really, really want to learn more from me than to have 100 people that are a bunch of freebie seekers, wouldn't you? Are you measuring your business by how many subscribers you're getting, or are you measuring your business by how many people become coaching clients each week? What's better? Is it better to have 10 new subscribers each week and one of those each week like clockwork becomes a coaching client or to get 1,000 subscribers each week and nobody becomes a coaching client? You have to make that decision. I can't make it for you. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i guessing which choice you would choose, but that may be the choice that you're choosing right now. But if you look at your squeeze page, which choice is your squeeze page choosing? Think about that. Okay, so now that we have a squeeze page, what do we need to do? We need to drive traffic to it. We need to drive traffic to your squeeze page. And there's a number of different ways that you can drive traffic to your squeeze page. I mean, there's probably, you know, I've seen lists of 100 different ways to generate traffic. Um, a lot of those tend to be duplicate. But, you know, in, in, in reality, there's a lot of ways to drive traffic out there, to drive cold prospects to your list. And a lot of those are paid traffic, you know, like you buy a visit or you do banner advertising or you do pay-per-click and that kind of thing. And, and although I've seen that successful for, it seems like a very small number of coaches are able to do something where they're just getting a ton of leads from lower quality sources and they're converting some of them. I'm not a big fan of that. I really believe in high quality traffic. And so, you know, I believe in finding places that by the time that somebody comes to get your free report that's positioned as an excerpt from your $5,000 course, I believe that they should already know a little bit about you, meaning that you, I don't believe in just doing three-line pay-per-click advertising for coaching. I really don't. I believe that instead you should use advertising that allows you to, for people to really get a flair for you a flavor for who you are. And I'll give you some of those ways you can do that. One is article marketing, writing articles and putting them out there. People read the article. If they like the article, they click through and they get your report. Guest blogging, okay? So, you know, you go out there and you become a guest blogger on somebody else's website that has lots of traffic, and people read it and they go, wow, I'd like to know more. Forum marketing, so people are going on to forums, they're asking lots of questions, and you can answer those questions for them and position yourself as an expert, okay? You could also do solo ads. You could buy email solo ads to people that have lists in your niche and say, hey, how much would it cost to send uh, uh, kudos out for me to your list, okay? So it's some price, you know? But, you know, maybe, maybe you got somebody that's in your niche that has a list of 10,000 people and they're willing for a few hundred dollars to send an email out to their list that says, hey, if you want some excellent information about your niche, you know, I, I suggest you get to know this person. Wow, would that not be worth it? Okay, and, and you know, maybe you find somebody that has 100,000 people on your list and the investment is $2,000, you know, or $5,000 investment. Well, you know, if you made 10 $5,000 coaching clients from it, it'd be worth it. So, so prices is, is, is a relative thing here. And then obviously, I mean, you could do some joint venture marketing where you recommend something to your list 
um, for some somebody else in exchange for them recommending something to their, their list. The only thing I recommend here is never do more than two or three a month and never do one with somebody you can't genuinely recommend. Okay, don't do it just to be commercial about it. Don't don't do it just to do one every day. Okay. So those are some of the ways you can drive traffic. All right, folks, here's what I'd like to do is, well, that concludes the coaching business overview. So that, that concludes. Let's just do a quick review of what we're going to do here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to design and outline a curriculum based on what you can teach, what part of the market will pay the most, um, what can you deliver in 13 weeks? What would you, would they learn each week during those 13 weeks? Would there be a homework assignment each week? Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to write emails that support the credibility needed to support the sale of this program. Then you are going to um, drive traffic to the squeeze page that gets people through the emails. And then the last piece is the connecting piece between the emails and the program itself, okay, and then so you've got to sell it to them. And so I recommend selling either on a teleseminar or a one-on-one -on -one phone call. And I recommend if you're generating less than ten grand a month, you do one-on-one -on -one phone calls. If you're doing more than ten and below twenty, you should probably do a mix. If you're doing more than twenty grand a month, it's probably time to start switching over to uh, selling via teleseminar. Okay, but understand your conversion rates are going to be lower on a teleseminar, so you'll need more prospects. Okay, uh, that is a coaching business in a nutshell. And again, I told you that because of the length of the material, that it wouldn't have as many details in it. The details, obviously, are the rest of my training materials.